Hey, so today I'm gonna show you guys how I make my videos. By the way, I'm Frozen Fresh. I make absinthe animations on YouTube and I live in Canada. Uh, this isn't a marijuana plant, but they are legal here. I'm gonna show you comprehensively how I make my videos. Even if you consider yourself a pro, you may find some stuff in this video that you can add to your kit. When I write a script, I think it's really important to have these six things. First of all, you have to hook the audience. You have about 10 to 12 seconds to hook a viewer to get them to keep watching. Where am I? Uh, what? What? Uh, what the? Uh, what the fuck? I'm glad you're awake, new best friend. A wonderful world of Pokemon awaits you. Pee, peek a pee. The second thing is you gotta maintain tension. As soon as things get boring, people lose interest and they're gonna stop watching your video. <laughs> That's my dark magician girl, Kaiba. The third thing is you want to subvert expectations. You don't want the audience to be able to predict where the story is going. Save me, Mario! Save me! Save me! No! What do you mean, no? I'm a tired! I'm a tired! The fourth one, of course, is using humor. You want to try to be funny as best you can. I have some good news and bad news. What's the good news? The good news is when I'm done with you, you'll be able to park wherever you want. But I'm not handicapped. <laughs> the fifth thing is you have to tell a coherent story. You want to make sure that the viewer is following what's happening in the story. A customer walks in and asks for a Big Mac, says to hold the onions. I put onions in it anyways, and I spit in it for disrespecting Shrek. The customer sees me spit in his burger. Number six, you want to end on something impactful. To finish the video wanting more, that's the best reaction you can have. Shave my head. Instant speed boost because of aerodynamics. I am the chosen one. They start screaming. You can't keep running. Some deus tax collectors will catch you. <laughs> my face when I'm Jeff Bezos. Now this is an optional step, but it is one I recommend because I do feel like it helps a lot. I make like a little comic strip showing where the characters are positioned on the screen, how they're looking, what they're doing. Because you don't really want to get to the animating step and realize, oh shoot, this doesn't actually really work. It, this gives you a better idea of how it's going to look before you go through all the recording and drawing and all that stuff. The next step is I make my backgrounds. I have three methods for this. The one I used for this video is I took backgrounds from the internet, I opened it in my drawing program GIMP, which is free, and I added an artistic filter called Water Pixels. You can even do this uh, with real life footage and it gives it kind of a cool painted look. The second method, credit to Goat on a Stick, I think this one works really well with video game backgrounds. Uh, you take a, a video game background, you add an artistic filter, Cartoonify, and then on top of that you add another filter called Oilify and it just tends to go really well with that kind of game, that video game uh, parody vibe. The third one, which is the most work, is to just draw the background yourself, but ultimately this one does look the best. My method is I trace a background that kind of looks what I want like, kind of looks what I want like, a background from the internet that I kind of like the way it looks, but I don't use any black. So if you draw the background and don't use any black outlines, it just, uh, it'll sit better on it. Now you get to record. What I would recommend for recording is that you make props. For me, I use cardstock paper. I cut it out and I make it into various things. So one prop I, I really like because it's gonna come up is a toy gun. If you draw over it and make it look dark gray or black, this looks really real. You can uh, use one of these guys. I have a training sword, I have, I have nunchucks, I have all sorts of stuff. If you've seen in some of my animations, characters have demon wings. I used a foam board and put that on my back, as long as it has the right shape, that's all that matters. What I do for any quick movement scenes, action scenes, I slow motion record, which goes at, I guess, about 10% speed. And because it's slowed down, this allows Epson to stick to the image way better. It doesn't have that motion blur. And then after I finish the process, I speed it up. So uh, I did several takes. In the end, I went with the first one, just cause it looked the smoothest. I took that, slowed it down, I animated it, and then I sped it up. 
The other thing I use is I use filters in my videos. This gives you a, a much wider variety of the kind of stuff you can do. I use Snapchat and Instagram, and then I go in their recording settings and they have thousands and thousands of different filters you can put on. So I searched up Naruto ones. I found um, a couple really good ones from Instagram and a couple really good ones from Snapchat and I applied them on all four of my characters. Referring to my storyboard, I record and I do at least five takes. I put all that into the cloud and put it onto my computer. Save me, Mario! Save me! Save me! No! What do you mean, no? I'm a tired! This is making the initial raw video. This part is pretty straightforward. Basically, I'm going to look through my takes, find the best take that I can and re-record if needed. In order to see each one together, I will add opacity on the, the ones on the higher, what's it, what's it fucking called? Layer, it's called a layer. I'll look through the footage, I'll choose the best takes and I'll order it out the way I would for the final video. So sometimes I don't record perfectly where I want them. So you can move them around on the screen a little bit, make them a little bigger, make them a little smaller. Just, I export that as a raw video reference point. And then I take all of the individual segments of video and I put them in a straight line. I slow them down to 40% speed. When I slow the video down, I'm less likely to get motion blurs. And from here, I make it into frames with the VLC player, and then I go to drawing. I think I ruptured my bowels. Oh yeah, they're loose. Now when I'm drawing, I use a mouse. I find it the most comfortable. I do have a drawing pad, which I use sometimes, but honestly, I'm just more acclimated to using a mouse. I put on someone in the background to listen to, like Moist Critical, Shoe on Head, Destiny, or sometimes Asmongold. I'm so straight, I could suck a dick and it wouldn't be gay. And yeah, then I get to drawing. So here's some examples of that with music and you won't have to hear my voice for a while. Damn it, Itachi! I'm gonna beat your ass when I find you! Look me in the eyeliner and say that again, bitch. Genjutsu. Why can't you be more like Sasuke? Alright, so now I'm done drawing all my keyframes. Thankfully, I draw really fucking fast. I'm gonna open up Absinthe, I'm gonna put the keyframe in, match it with the base frame, and I'm gonna choose the parameters that I'm synthesizing to, and I'm gonna press Synth. Now, I notice almost immediately that my output frames do not look like my keyframe. They're getting a little blurry and glitchy. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open Absinthe again. I'm going to hit Advanced Settings, and I'm going to increase the mapping. When you increase mapping, this forces Absinthe to make the output frames a lot more like the keyframe, and they'll hold the shape better. One of the disadvantages is that it will be more rigid looking. Now that I've drawn everything and I have my backgrounds, I put my backgrounds in and then I put my frames of my characters over top of that. For this video in particular, I'm using a filter that puts some lines through the background and gives kind of like a cool blur effect. So I change this up every video. This is just the one I happen to be using this time. Now, once I got all the character frames on their backgrounds, I put them down, I export it. And because if you remember earlier, I said I slow it down, I'm going to match it up with the raw recording and speed it up. And from here, now I can start adding special effects, transitions, panning, and all that kind of stuff. So you can see some examples of what I did here. I've added some elements. I have an element for when uh, the Genjutsu starts. I have flames go out and they carry over onto the next screen. On this scene, for the action shot, I put some anime action lines on the side and I also had it panning away from Naruto. For this final scene at the end, I have the background start panning and I use a transition called Dissolve, which makes it turn into this other one, which is Sharing Guns. And for the Sharing Guns, I put an effect on it, which gives it like kind of a cool blurry dreamlike look. For this scene, to make it a little more trippy, I only animated the character's clothing and left the rest of them unanimated. Then I added a blur effect on the background that gives this kind of trippy look to it. And from here now, I'm going to re-record the audio for the voices. I didn't used to do this, but honestly, it sounds a lot better. Go on YouTube, and I'm gonna look up some sound effects that I think fit the video. Now it is a Naruto parody, so I'm gonna look for some Naruto sound effects and some popular Naruto background songs. And now music can add atmosphere. Similarly, um, visuals can as well. So you're adding kind of a bright, if you brighten something, make it more colorful, it can be happy. If you kind of put like a dark, a darkness on something, you can make it look more disturbing and trippy. All right, new best friend. It's time to start your adventure. But first, are you a boy? Or a girl? And finally, before I output this video, I'm gonna put camera shake on it. So for whatever reason, it just looks more professional. Take it with a grain of salt. I have no film knowledge, I'm self-taught. I just research on the internet and this is what I've learned from doing Epson videos for 14 months. I'll link you my other tutorials and I'm gonna link you some other Epson's channels because if you really wanna learn how to get good with this program, you wanna watch as many people as you can. Wait, you speak Japanese? No, I've just watched like 400 episodes of Naruto. <laughs> 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 Blood.